All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome Hi. back to Sunday Tea Book episode 19. 19. I just get so stoked every time to um, see. To, you, we're getting so far into this book. I When we started, I was like, will we ever finish this book? Now, at more than halfway through, I'm just mm -hmm. checking the thickness of the book over there. I um, Nice. It's the tea evening for Jan. That's hey, Jan. right. That's the tea evening. Hey, Jan, Third Planet, <laughs> Bruna. Bruna, welcome, everybody. Mm. Welcome, folks on Instagram. Uh, welcome to Sunday Tea Book, episode 19. We are back. Yes. And today we will be having some Qianliang Ta 2012. Mm, that's right. So I we haven't had this tea for a while. It's been definitely a Quite. while. We've been drinking Qianliang Cha a little bit. Mm -hmm. I love this tea. This tea, I got to admit, it took a while for it to <laughs> it's grow on me. It's a big chunk. Hey, for you guys on YouTube, I'll give you the montage for Instagram. You've got her showing right. it. So on that note, if you're on Instagram checking this out, it's better to head over to YouTube because we've got a bit of a nicer display over there where we can show you the tea that we're drinking. I put up a couple of pictures this time, guys, from the website, which you'll mm -hmm. see over there. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's and, a um, really big chunk. I don't think we will be able to like uh, finish it. it. Yeah. On the live, we will be probably continuing sipping till the end of the day. Yeah, which yeah. is great. It's got great longevity. I was just mentioning a couple notes on this tea. When I first had Tianliang Cha, not just 2012, but any of them, the first one I had was actually the, uh, the Tianliang Cha regular that we have on our website. I didn't know what to think of it right away. I, so I tasted it, I took my notes, but I didn't do the, usually I do the write-up right after my tasting, so I make sure it's done and it's, it's all fresh in my mind, but I actually mm -hmm. waited and did a retaste the next day. Mm -hmm. It took a while to grow on me. Really calming. It's quite a different. Very different, calming Especially it comes from like a, a oolong kind of a uh, lover. Yes. Right. What, what struck out, stood out to me though, as uh, sort of months and years went by, was how many other people had similar comment, like they love this tea, but it's not like a, it's not like a punch in the face. I love it right away. It's like a, it's like a, I don't know if this is a cheesy metaphor, but sort of like a, I don't know how to describe it. Try it out. <laughs> Maybe just try it out. Were you guys like me, like waiting, 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 and eventually D let you down. <laughs> and if you, you might've seen the log. I showed the log. This thing comes from a really impressive log. And mm. I showed a quick picture on the web uh, just a moment ago, but if you want to check it out, that's on our website. Right. Um, that, that piece, that cake, cake but it's a slice of a log it's about this big it's super impressive and really really hard packed like almost impossible to break apart yes all right guys so let's jump in here sunday tea book episode 19 first i'm going to spend a minute uh for those of you that are new hey igor welcome back fernanda um welcome back to sunday tea book i'm gonna and let us know what tea you're drinking yeah let us know what you are all drinking sunday tea book what's it all about right this is uh, an idea that we got from you guys where jen and i uh, come back and we, we, we look at uh, books, articles, or papers that are written in Chinese, hard to access, full of great information, and we translate them here live with you. I wanted to say something different today a little bit, sort of vis-a-vis -vis our roles, the roles that we take when we do China Tea. I was thinking about something that maybe we don't, I don't emphasize enough because it's hard for Jen to emphasize is I've been in the tea business or in the tea industry or a tea lover for about five years. So uh, this is not meant to make anybody feel bad or anything, but basically I'm, I'm a total newbie at this. And what gives us the ability to dive into a book like this and to cover it with you is Jen's expertise and Jen Lee, who is the author of the book we're going to, we're going to, we've been working through is their expertise. So you know, I, I ha it's not just me who's been running over and, and sourcing tea for a few years and learn a few things. Jian Li has a background in tea academia, like tea in the universities, tea is a thing that's under study. Just like here in agriculture, we study soybeans and corn and that. Over there, tea is a real deal thing. She's been involved in that. She's been running all over China to all, not running, but visiting all farms all over China. So all the tea processes intimately familiar with tasting tea, high-end tasting great Chinese tea. So the reason, what, what I realized I was leaving out is the reason Sunday Tea Book resonates so much with me, I think, is because it's bang on the mission of Gen Tea, which is to bring you guys real authentic tasting great Chinese tea and authentic information about Chinese tea, which is very, I, we find like that was one of the burning elements that why Jen and I started this business is 
a ton of misinformation out there. So our core mission is to first alleviate that. Our belief is that once that's alleviated, people will just come and find the good tea. That's what Sunday Tea Book's all about. Please chip in with your comments. So we're doing the translation live. Why that's fun is you're gonna get an insight into why some of these things are so tricky to understand or translate or this and that. And you're gonna be able to help us out. I get stuck finding the right wording sometimes. And uh, so chip in, questions, comments, suggestions on how to say something, we love those. And head over to the website, the link is in the description down below. Mm -hmm. We we'll um, have the full translation, full translation. Uh, posted because we often use a lot of opinion or stuff to mm -hmm. make the uh, uh, to kind of explain why there is uh, some miscommunication or why there are so many confusions and so yes. many different names. So I would like to put a pinyin version there. Uh, so I think it's great to check the written form. Yes, besides awesome. Third Planet is drinking a 2010 Yunnan dark tea, so that's oh, nice. fantastic. Nice. That's perfectly in alignment with the mm -hmm. section we're heading into. You would like to have a Tianliang Cha after dinner. I think that's very... Brilliant. Yes. Yeah, it's really in that it's zone. It's really calming. Calming and also has a little less fermented than maybe a other dark teas. Yes. So it has a bit of that Shen Puar quality of helping to settle the stomach a bit. Mm -hmm. Mild. I found it's a much, much milder. Much. I love that sort of mini, mini barnyard, fresh hay, fresh hay slash old wooden structure, like an old clapboard structure sort of aroma. Really nice. Jan is drinking Choupoir, really, a uh, really good one, old one, but I have forgotten the uh, name and year. As long as doesn't it's old matter. and good, doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> right on. So what else, who else is drinking? Uh, Fernanda Hay, awesome. And hi there, NW Ferg on Instagram and Cardboard Monk. <laughs> Welcome on the Instagram side. Welcome to Sunday Tea Book. Yeah, so we're continuing on the China Tea Book written by my mom, Jenny Wu. And um, today's session is uh, introduction to dark tea. So that would be really interesting. Yes, last I week think. we finished green tea. It was Ooh, a pretty yeah. big section, of course, tons of green tea in China. See how much this is what we are done? Very, and this yeah. is upcoming. I don't want to seem overly proud, but I'm really happy we yeah. make it so far through the book. Yes. So right, so um, the way it works when we translate the book is for you guys out there in Instagram land, you're going to want to jump on over to YouTube because I'm going to pull the pages right up on the screen. We're going to turn into mini little people in the corner. Uh, I'm going to go through a section and I'm going to let you guys know uh, the translation is chunky. This book is written in Chinese and English. I think you mentioned, mentioned that. Uh, the Chinese is airtight. The English is... Uh, so I'm, I'm going to read it as it's written and then I'm going to let you know what I got out of it. Jen's going to jump in and make sure uh, something wasn't, that I didn't miss anything completely because it wasn't there or that something was ill-explained Ill or worse. Sometimes it seems like I understood and it was written properly in English, but it's actually not what it meant. So mm -hmm. those are the real traps. We're going to get all of those out of the way. You guys, that's where you guys are going to give us all your questions and let us know what kind of words we might need to use. Mm -hmm. Pull up the translation that's in the description down below for sure, the finished one for the folks on YouTube. Uh, so you can follow along and get some of those pinyin words, which sometimes it's better just to keep them. Like mm. a lot of Japanese tea words, they're it, not translated. Yeah. I think a lot of Chinese tea terms, it's, it's better just to... It's hard to translate. Yeah. And when you translate it word by word, it's just... Uh, yeah. It's lost That's and right. confusing. And she says it with the perfect Chinese accent, but I don't think we have to worry about that, guys. We can just say that I don't like, even put accent. Tian Liang Cha, you know, you don't have to worry about that. Um, and you're good. You give that the English version, right? So, all right. Instagrammers, head on over to YouTube. Once you get there, click that subscribe button. Those of you on YouTube that haven't also, if you're interested in the content we do, hit that subscribe button, hit the notify bell so you know whenever we put out uh, whenever we go live or put out new videos, we cover stuff like we do vlogs, so tra tra tea travel to China, uh, how to brew, uh, just all kinds of great, accurate Chinese tea information. So pop on over. I'm going to say bye-bye to Instagram. We're going to get on with it. So bye-bye, Instagram. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Fernando says, my hairstyle is so cute. It reminds me of... Uh Oh, I love your hairstyle. I, <laughs> I requested she don't change that because I love the little, I'm going to make the, I'm going to use the Instagram title with showing the two little dots, a little bit like Mickey It's Musk. really just clean, you know, I was uh, Comfy, doing, right? yeah, I was doing a cleaning job and get it really hot and stuff. I just love all the hair up. Oh, I somehow went you. live again. I'm not really live. I'm leaving. I off.
often like to point out uh, uh, how the liquor uh, texture is when I was pulling the liquor. Same with this one. This one comes from the Royal Tea Garden or used to be a Royal Tea Garden called uh, Gaoma Arxi. It's a little bit long, but if you check mm. on the, the product uh, page, the uh, additional information is says Also linked down below in the description. Right. And uh, that used to be a, a royal tribute tea garden. So the material and the, uh, the uh, landscape, I mean, the, the, the terroir is really good. And this is eight years old. So when I pour it, just that, uh, again, I often call that uh, elasticity. Like the, 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 oh, the thickness the of thick, the viscosity the, of yeah, the liquor, the, the right? Yeah, the brothiness of the liquor, the texture is really beautiful. <laughs> she call you little panda. <laughs> so cute. I agree, Fernanda. It's super cute. And okay, cool. We're all caught up. So I'm going to jump over to the book, folks. Mm -hmm. uh, I showed you the tea. Here we go. All right. So as Jen mentioned, we're going through China Tea, a book written by her mom, Jen Li Wu. We have made it through a bunch of great sections full of information. Most recently, uh, we finished, completely finished the green tea section, which ended down here with those guys. And now we are diving into guys, dark tea, a really exciting section and covering the intro of dark tea. Mm. So introducing dark tea. I'm going to squeeze a little closer to you. Okay. Every now and then we'll refer back to the uh, Chinese section if there's some interesting characters and stuff. Mm -hmm. Also a beautiful picture cruising by. I'm going to move me to the other side. We're very high tech now. Did that work? No. No, we're semi high tech. <laughs> semi high tech. There we go. Okay, worked. <laughs> now we're full high tech. Again. Now we're full high tech again. <laughs> All right, guys. So here we go. Dark tea. Dark tea belongs to post fermented. Let's have a sip first before I dive in. Mm. Be civilized a little bit. Jolly good. Mm. Oh, I wanted to show you. Let them see you do the uh, pour. I poured already. Next time. I'm going to try and use the tea cam this time a little bit more, guys. Right, right, right. Next time, I will just give you a signal that you switch. Okay. Mm. Should we tell the signal or we don't want them to know because we want to surprise them? Okay. Shh. <laughs> Just kidding around. All right, guys, dark tea. Dark tea belongs to post-fermented. Its unique fermentation process gives out new chemical substances. It has an effect on losing weight, lowering cholesterol, inhibiting arteriosclerosis. It meets the health demands of the people who like eating meat and cereal. Among them, Yunnan Puar is famous all over the world. You want to do that section? Just go section yeah, by section. Yeah, we'll break yeah, it up a absolutely. bit. Absolutely. All right. So basically this section was a little intro para. I found it was pretty much okay. Mm -hmm. Mostly got me excited, right? First, all those health benefits. I was like, mm -hmm. woohoo, dark tea, yay. Mm -hmm. And it is like we don't go overboard on the health benefits, but it is good for all of those things. It's got those um, probiotic sort of aspects. And um, yeah, the, the thing about... Um, Eating meat and, and cereal is a bit interesting, maybe for people less familiar with the sort of the geograph geographic history of China. I think, yeah, first, I think cereal to most of you guys grains. is the grains. reference, but it means mm. the, the, the grains, like, uh, uh, like old times of rougher grains, mm. you know, and uh, uh, like eating meat is the more meaning uh, meat based diet, right. like the Western diet or some minorities. Uh, in China, they also have really heavy uh, meat diet. Right, in some parts. Mm. But yeah, so that's a good point. I kind of glossed over those because we talk about that a lot. I'm mm. pretty familiar with that. Mm -hmm. And of course, Puar, famous all over the world. Mm. First sight. So probably that means the, you know, looking at the tea before you yes. even brew it or anything. Most of the tea emphasis on fresh tea leaves. The shorter time, the more valuable. Nobody is interested in the old tea. The dark tea is an alternative. The longer the storage of tea, more rare to get. Because the dark tea is deeply fermented tea, fermented for more than 80%, so the longer the storage time, the more concentrated flavor. That is why it is popular recent years. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is a little bit, like I think again, the meaning is, overall meaning I think came through. Yes, um, I agree. Just a little bit, um, chunky 
Mm. Um, but basically, dark tea is not going for those fresh, tender buds and early pluck and all that other jazz that, like, let's say, green tea was going for. Yes. We it's fermented, so it's. I think of, the first uh, sentence which talk about most of the tea emphasis on emphasize on emphasis on uh, fresh, fresh tea, leaves. tea leaves. The shorter the time, the more valuable. Like it's understandable, but I think it's uh, losing some of the content that mm. the original Chinese is. Which uh, yes, first it touches on uh, uh, because most of the emphasize fresh tea leaves. Uh, but dark tea also uses fresh tea leaf. Mm. It doesn't uh, put right, a right. dark tea on the opposite side of fresh tea leaf. They still process right. using fresh tea leaf. But the uh, the Chinese one was more talking about the processing time. Like any uh, tea, the shorter right. processing time, almost the better. I noticed that there are some uh, sometimes some marketing uh, saying, oh, this time was processed six. 36 hours, this oolong process six, uh, 36 hours, or right. uh, as if the longer the better, it's not, okay? Right. Teas are not like that. And uh, if you have to uh, simplify this matter, the shorter the better. But of course, there's more complication, but it's right. definitely not the longer the better. Mm -hmm. And Oh, do you want to look at it? Oh. Switch to the camera? Oh, yeah. Our signal is very not signal. Oh, it's, it's being fussy today. Oh. It's supposed to be there. Maybe just the regular camera so we can, at least I can pull that up. Yeah, Maybe a yeah, little bit coming higher. back. And here I want to see if we can sh see the texture. Do you see how the liquor hits? Including how it drips. Mm. See that pause there? Anyway, it it might be better if you see that in real life, and it's just a good element to observe yeah, yeah, when you're I, having tea. It took me a long time to first, but kind of even believe that that was a thing. But the, the more you brew tea, the more you'll start to notice. It's very subtle. Obviously, there's it's not like it's turning into toothpaste in terms of viscosity difference from mm. water to toothpaste. It's still basically water, but mm -hmm. there's that little thickness element. Right. So uh, back to the book. Uh, right, we were talking about the um, older the, the better. The, like the shorter the time, the, it's not very clear. It could mean the shorter the process time. It could mean the shorter, like uh, the close to, uh, how should I say, the, the uh, shorter to the production. From production time. to consume. Yeah, yeah. Right, the, the amount of time between production and consumption. And right. it kind of does intimate that too a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so it's kind of a, in both ways. Mm -hmm. And uh, then talk about dark tea is kind of the other uh, the other type which uh, values time, the longer the storage. Because later on, yes. the, this paragraph we're talking about storage. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and they introduce sort of the concept here that the... Uh, yes. Yeah, aging, right? They introduce the concept of aging with the longer the storage time, mm -hmm. right? The more concentrated flavor, which mm -hmm. is why it's popular recent years. It gives us that sort of wine or aged whiskey kind of feeling. Yes. And yeah. And uh, I just want to point out the word concentrated it could be sometimes to feel like it becomes stronger mm. or something, but it's Good not point. quite like that. Uh, this, I don't... Uh, uh, it's richer. It's not mm. like a concentration. No, yeah. So there is a difference, and it changes and stuff. So I. It's uh, almost more of just a maturation, like change. It changes and matures yes. in its own way. Yes. Not become more intense or bold or yes. something like that. Mm. Okay, great. Unique way to produce tea. Oh, book. They need the book. <laughs> We don't have a signal for the book. Dark tea, pro dark tea procedure includes fixation, rolling, piling for color and drying. Piling is to put the rolling well tea to the moist place to be fermentation, which has an effect on warming up. Piling is the key to determine the tea quality. The duration and degree can affect the quality and make different types of dark tea in significantly different style. Okay, so... The basic idea, I think, again, was conveyed, which seems to be saying that piling is the key step That's in right. dark tea. 
That's right. Um, it also seems that, um, and they kind of tell you that that basically means after you roll it, you pu you put it in a, put it off to the side and let it ferment for a while, let it mm -hmm. and generate some heat. Mm -hmm. um, whoops, jiggling around. And then the different dark teas seem to have different duration and degree of piling, which affects their flavor. Yes. I think pretty solid, right? Yes, I agree. This uh, paragraph was pretty good. Okay, great. Carefully watching. Hey, JS, welcome to the uh, welcome to the live stream. Hello. Just as a reminder, the finished translation is in the link down below if you want to follow along with the uh, with the with the sort of mm. our finished version of the translation. Right. All right, so where am I carefully watching? Awesome. The dark, the dark tea soup is dark red, bright red, or pale red. Different kinds appear in different colors. The unfermented puar soup is light yellow, while puar, which fermented naturally, will become orange, light red, and dark red according to the storage time. The fermented puar is bright red and make people enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is um, carefully watching. If you remember back to the earlier episodes, we went how to, uh, how to appraise or how to sort of evaluate tea. And, and this is one of the steps to have a good look at the uh, liquor in this case, right? Mm -hmm. So they cover, again, pretty good. The tea soup is, uh, is, is dark red or a few different, it has different shades depending on the types. Unfermented puar, aka shem puar. Yes. So for those, um, is light yellow, as people will know. And then this is a bit, I don't think it's that confusing, but basically puar, which ferment naturally. So aged shem puar, yes. shem puar that's been left to, uh, to naturally ferment, which I should mention, there's some debate. It's like a, maybe we shouldn't go there, but some people debate whether it's fermenting when in age or oxidizing. It turns out it's probably a little bit of a combination of both, depending on the environment not really covered in the book but but a fun topic yeah love i think to I, I really like you throwing the keyword of depending on the environment it right? is like that mm. yes so anyway so the this aged shampooar uh goes from light yellow to orange to light red to dark red according to the storage time mm -hmm. and fermented puar shu puar is bright red which makes people enjoyable i think we can all relate to that right shu puar makes me happy Absolutely. especially in the evening Absolutely. Yeah, and John just commented that he loves, he likes the color of that dark ruby color of a really nice and yes. bright. We're going to talk about that in a while, but I love that too, that rich ruby color of a shu puar. We had, I should mm. talk, I want to talk about the Bainian Songping, which is a shem puar yeah. from early 1900s. And that liquor was so ruby red, so clear, almost like a luminescent. It was so bright. Yes, yes. Um, Check out the, we have a blog post which we took a lot of pictures and wrote about mm. the experience, our tasting yeah. notes and stuff. Uh, being, we'll try to put the link uh, I'm gonna, down after. Yeah, I'm going to put a note. Am I shaking too much? I'll try not to you shake. <laughs> You're lucky because he's not typing. When he typings, the whole it's house like is earthquake. like earthquake. It's like an earthquake. <sighs> All right. Any other comments? No, I'm going to keep rocking and rolling. Mm -hmm. I think we're doing Absolutely. great here. The tea is really lovely. I'm just going to actually, since I'm doing so much reading, have a little drink. Mm. I really like how soothing it is. It's really hard for me to describe. It's not like oolong that I have a lot mm. of elements, but yeah. it somehow has its own... Mm. Uh, profile. Yeah. Totally its own complete profile. And the little mushroomy, uh, I didn't mention it on the, when I smelled the dry leaf, because I didn't, didn't get that hint, but in the liquor, I get that little, a little mushroomy sort of um, flavor, mouthfeel mm. flavor. The mouthfeel is plenty thick. A little, the regular Tianyang Cha has a pretty, brisk watermelon rind flavor yeah. that this guy's grown out of i think no i think right? it has a wood the wood more in this one yeah. yes and for me the most feel is what's mm. like oh, so good very good ah oh, there we go charming the charming fragrance oh I'll put that down a bit mm -hmm. dark tea contains aged fragrance charm and fermented aroma puar's fragrance is a representative among the dark tea, its taste and mouthfeel are easily being accepted. 
Mm -hmm. So aged fragrance, I was okay with that term, but I think okay. that's a little bit strange for a lot of people. Like the, uh, we talk a little bit sometimes about the thickness and the flavor of age. Right. So if you have our uh, finished uh, translation version there, uh, you will notice I also put the pinyin uh, of this yes. in there because these are those words that are a little bit more specific and uh, it's a little bit hard to explain or direct translate in one or two words but I kind of tried it's that uh, age fragrance, age aroma we call mm. that Xiang. so uh, just consider this almost like uh, we say apple flavor it's only because we're familiar with apple, so we know what flavor it is. Right. So we're, we never need to really good communication point. to each other that uh, what apple actually mm. tastes like. Right? right. So what you're saying is if I haven't tasted Chen Xiang, yeah, you might if not I haven't understand. tasted that aged flavor, there's, I can't almost. Yes. More like I can't. And, and it's a little bit great... hard to describe, oh, is that mm -hmm. earthy? Is that like a wo just woody? Or is it a complex uh, taste mm -hmm. that... Mm -hmm existing in almost it, all the aged tea yeah yeah it's like meat taste has right. a general taste like meat but different meats have different unique profiles aged tea all has this thing right. even though they're all different teas with their own yes mm. then chen yun is the next one here it calls a charm mm. uh it's uh, means aged charm aged <laughs> it's a it's a, a kind of a going deeper to the character of the tea the mm -hmm. prop property like character the, the the style of the tea okay. taste Re it, so you know, not necessarily throat feel you not necessarily it's, just okay. it's the whole okay. thing that comes from the aging even i got a little bit i'm a little bit familiar with yun so i right. thought oh that might be that but it's actually it's more as aged character yeah. If you have to link what's the prominent, like the most uh, significant uh, thing you could notice about Chen Yun, uh, the aged Yun is the thick mouth feel that mm. brings the power mm. of the complexity in mouth. Right. And then the last one here called fermented aroma, which is a right quite a literal but it also means matured aroma because mm. by uh, fermenting the shen uh, to shu we're trying to speed up the aging mm. right so it has that uh, um, matured flavor we like to not uh, translate uh, shu puar as cooked puar because it kind of uh, mislead people sorry mislead people to think there's a cooking or really high temperature fermentation mm. or something. It's not like that. I, uh, if somebody pref uh, likes to transfer, uh, translate it, I think mature might be a better right. way right. to say it, which is also right in terms of the meaning of this character itself. Mm -hmm. This character shu could mean cooked or matured, like fruit, we will use that. Right. Yeah. Or fermented, right? Uh, like shu. Okay. No, not quite fermented. Right. This comes More from the tea. Mature. It's just how we use it. Right. That's why we in, initial one wasn't cooked. It was like a mature, a speed up mature kind of thing. Right, right. I was mixing up. I meant to say ripe. Yeah, ripe. Because you those... use it with fruit, so it still oh, works right, there. Oh, right, 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 right. So ripe, ripe is the... Yes. Um, right. Just because there's a shu puar thing, we sometimes hear people say cooked puar, mm. which because of that... So even in, even in Chinese, I think people can get confused with that because the shu can mean cooked, right? Mm, mm. Um, so uh, ripe is a better word for shu puar. But anyway, I'm kind of confusing the uh, issue because here you're talking about the the shu aroma, right? The, yes. the mature fragrance. Where mature yes. is a nicer fit, I think. Yes. Than, I think than that's ripe. the word I chose. Uh, yeah, you did. And yeah, it's tell us if uh, you have a, you know better suggestions or something. We're totally open to. Um, you know, mm -hmm. learn more from you guys because these are terms and names and words that there's no, uh, you know, common understanding. So, yeah, help that's us right. Out. So, let's uh, check out the comments here quickly. Mm -hmm. We've got a hmm, little panda. There we go. Really love the color of Shupuar. Yes, also the lovely earthy smell. Mm. Mm. Yes. Yes, you I, know, sometimes I, I find people are like that too extreme. Uh, at least uh, years, a couple of years ago when we did the festivals, it was a two group of people of extreme love Shupuar or hate Shupuar. Mm. I really have people who have a sip and say, oh, 
Okay, nothing. Pretty the good. Usual, yeah, the, right. it's a, almost an instant. Oh no, I don't like it. Or oh, I love this. Right, right. It's quite interesting. And um, the earthy on the or note of the earthy flavor note, I noticed um, especially recently we've been dipping into our 2015 Shupuar lately, and our that's our if you know us at all, my evening tea, my pretty much my only option is Shupuar or something heavily fermented. It seems that it's less caffeine. It doesn't trigger my caffeine sensitivity. Mm -hmm. So I can get a good night's sleep. In fact, it even calms me. But with the uh, 2015, it started with more of that earthy tone, but now it's actually transformed to woody very much. And I think you just mentioned, I gotta mm. re redo the write-up. It's been a while since we addressed that write-up, but mm. it's a lovely woody flavor now. Yeah. Woody, uh, sorry, woody aroma and, yeah. and flavor, mm. rather than that earthiness. Um, uh, sorry, I was just going through the comments and got right, sidetracked. Right. Ruby red color. Is yeah. it correct to say that both? So, um, Third Planet asks: Is it correct to say that both dark tea and shen yeah. shen puar both focus on aging the tea, but dark tea changes faster due to the intentional fermentation process than shen puar that ferments? Hmm. Mm. Great question. Okay, first, I love your question. Thanks for asking That's that because I think I think a lot of people have that exact question. Uh, I think this question uh, consists of two parts, right? First, mm. uh, uh, does uh, basically does dark tea and shen puar both focus on aging the tea? That's right. Mm. Uh, yeah, second, good, good breakdown. So. Is uh, so dark tea changes faster due to the intentional fermentation. Yeah, I think process the implication is it kind of gets a kickstart, right? Mm. Does that kickstart make it age quote unquote faster? I don't think mm. so. I don't think so. The way to look at it in terms of a changing, because I, I think we're talking about changing speed is mm. more focused on the environment where mm. it is aged. And uh, a kickstart doesn't really, it's not, uh, I think uh, this question might come from some uh, in, uh, some thought that because they already introduced some uh, bacteria or something yeah. but it's not quite like that because the shampoo are also it's not a fully done it has a lot of potential there mm -hmm. i don't think that initial like a like a making yogurt kind of concept of giving that a little culture because there's no giving culture uh let me organize what i wanted to say it's, yeah there, there's no it's not like an oculine yeah but. i think the major uh in terms of the speed, the major uh, factor is the storage in environment, environment yeah. rather and, than the uh, other one. And I, I, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's important to remember that regardless it's shampoo or regardless if it's a dark tea that had some induced fermentation, the finished tea when the producer is done is dry. That's right. It, you know, you cannot, so it's sort of in yeah, theory, really good in point. theory it should, it's stopped. Yes. So now the ferment it's a different kind of fermentation that's yes. happening after the tea is delivered as finished tea. It's not it's not what was he was doing in that that's pile. That's a really good point. Okay. That's a really good point to yeah. add on. Cool. Yes, yeah, that's got really some good. points. No, and but really Very thank you for the, the question, third plan. And that that's was a excellent. really good question. Because mm, that really kind good. of because it make me think of a, uh, now I think of that question it reminds me that like compare you make yogurt with milk with or without a little culture in it there is a speed difference mm -hmm. right but that's yes, not yes exactly that's why i was mm. talking about culture and yogurt like no, crazy no that's a good point but i uh, they're not the same as in tea right right yeah really good um, and then Igor says, the more tea we prepare, the better we can identify the different color tones, changes in the thickness of the liquor, changes in smells and flavors. That's good for evolution. Let's keep it up. Yeah. Absolutely that, right. There's really no other way. There's I think that's the best. Yeah. Like, yeah, the yeah. more you drink, the more that's where our all of our intuitive brewing, if you've watched any of our how to brew videos, we always kind of push away from timers push away from thermometers and we encourage look at the liquor color which if Observe. it's the first time you ever brew you know then it's tricky that's really been on because mm, really everything we need to experience we need to accumulate that mm -hmm. otherwise uh, with all the color like you see from the book it's red dark red but there are so many shades in right. that range and right. what is ra radiance what is yeah like brightness really needs that all right okay thanks for that Yes, uh, that was really 
Ban on, right? Yeah. Nailed it. Ban yeah. on. Ban on. Nailed it. Out of the park. Which I should say is a baseball metaphor for those of you from Europe who might not know what out of the park means. It's not a bad thing. We didn't kick anybody out of the park. Igor simply hit the ball out of the park, which means awesome. Bang on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It seems to also be a a little uh, idiom idiom lesson too. Is that North American? Mostly? Pretty much nobody plays baseball in the world except Americans. Even Canadians don't play Japan. baseball. Oh, don't, I'm going to get a lot of hate comments for that probably. <laughs> oh yeah, in Japan. Yeah, sort of weird. But anyway, back to tea. Back to tea, folks. It's not a baseball channel. All right, the basic classification of dark tea. Uh, Hunan dark tea, Anhua dark tea, etc. Hubei dark tea, Puzi Laoxing tea, etc. Sichuan bian tea. Nanlu Bian Ti, Silu Bian Ti, etc. Diangwe Dark Ti, Puar Ti, Guanxi Liobao Ti, etc. I'm going to dive into the next section, okay? I don't think those are just basically, uh, I guess we can say, but it seems like they're classifying Dark Ti by, by, roughly by region slash province. Not Ooh, really, really smart. Right? Oh, so for those of you, I've been, so these are all provinces, Hunan, Hubei, Sichuan. Mm -hmm. The only one that's quote unquote to me not a province is Diangu, but I guess because of Dian Hong, this must be Yunnan and also big hint there, Yunnan, right? So, so that's uh, what that is. Hey, this came back. I wanted that to go away at the bottom. Oh, well. So, oh, I forgot to do the green section again. Oh no, it's okay. It's skills for brewing. It's out of scope. All right, guys. So next one. The identification. So can we, we can go over that, right? Did I miss anything? You huh? gave me a thumbs up, right? The, I, I got the regions and the You didn't problems. get a thumbs up. When did you get a thumbs you up? You gave me a thumbs up. You seem pretty impressed. <laughs> oh, yes. I, okay, okay. Right? She gave yeah. me a thumbs up big time. <laughs> okay, you get a thumbs up. It was a that, metaphorical thumbs up. That was a really, okay. uh, really impressive how you guessed everything. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and I guess it's not that obvious because the, the, I've been to the, some of those provinces. Mm. Mm. Actually, no, none of those provinces except Yunnan. Sichuan, you were in Oh, Sichuan. Sichuan, that's right, I was in Sichuan. The identification of Puar. Okay, this one's pretty long, so maybe, maybe I'll do paragraph by paragraph. What do you think, Moss? Okay, I will, maybe we can just finish this section. Oh, I, oh, was, are we I was fully done. done? Yeah, we're that's done. why I was oh, getting. Oh, I was uh, okay. Okay, I saw. Okay, we're, we're coming back here. We're coming back to here. Uh, one thing. So we're here. Uh, maybe one more than one thing. <laughs> um, uh, you know that in terms of a geography. Mm. Uh, so they're from different regions, and Hubei is actually uh, really one of the earliest um, darchi. Not very famous uh, in China or here. Uh, Fourteen. Fuji, yeah. Right. Yeah, dark tea. Um, for Fuji, dark tea, I've never Fuji, heard of that. Yeah, Lao Tian Cha is a very, uh, a very uh, old style dark yeah, ancient? tea. Ancient. Cool. Right. Then uh, the Sichuan Bian Tea. What is a Bian Tea? Sichuan Bian Cha. Uh, the, those are teas that uh, go out uh, to uh, Tibet right, and stuff. Right. And uh, Nan Lu, it's a south. Root, bian cha. Oh, nice. Bian cha. Bian means the edge, the edge, and that's what it means. It goes to the edge. edge it goes to the to edge. Bed, of, it's the old go border. to Qinghai. Yes. Ah. Go to those minority area. Minority and South nomads. Road. Nomads area. Right, right. Yes. So Nanlu means the south. That those teas are produced. Huge mainly historically goes from the south route to Tibet or uh, and uh, the Xilu could uh, go in the west route all the way to uh, Tibet, mm. uh, Xinjiang, uh, Qinghai, those kind of area. Yeah. So these are not like a traditional tea naming system, like a location plus this cultivar or something. This is more like a historical tea name. And uh, it refers to a bunch of dark tea produced in Sichuan. Right. I'm just going to, I was going to tell them, um, if you want to try uh, Bian Xiao, you can check our website. I'm going to link it after the video, after we're done. But we have uh, um, uh, uh, Zhang Cha. So oh, Zhang Cha is gone. Could be, could be. I think you're right, actually. Mm. Okay, I'll check if we still have it and I'll link it there. And if not, I'll try and find some other relate, some other reference to it that we have. Maybe a video, but I don't think we did that because we visited right. um, a really neat factory where they actually produce this tea and we chat with the producer about 
how he he has sort of three generations of this bian cha,、mm. right? They're also doing like improvement yeah, in yeah. terms of the taste of those, uh, uh, you know,、uh, mm -hmm. how should I say, not popular tea. Right, dark、yeah. tea were never popular for most people. Yeah, so the the edge tea, right, goes、yeah. out of the edge. The people inside China basically hate it. Okay, I'll speak freely for you, right? They don't want to drink that. They consider it's awful. They want their green tea. They want those kind of things, right? So the first generation continues to go out and they make that. But then he try he made a, a evolution of it, which is cool. Well, because, on the other hand, it's related to diet. We、right. talk about、That's、how、right. dark tea is great on digesting meat and stuff, and、mm -hmm. the the most uh, the uh, like the people in Sichuan. In, All those area we eat quite not as meaty as the nomads. So if we drink dark tea, we will be hungry in two seconds. Yeah, hungry all the time. <laughs> and also for the nomads, it's not need to mention that that tea is kind of their nutrition. If you've watched some of those、uh, mm. Tibet videos or stuff like that, where you see how the okay, I sorry, no, no, it's no, okay. I, I thought you were done. Sorry, I'm done. You are. Okay.、Yeah. I just want to come back. I don't want to drift、uh, too far away, everywhere、mm. to one、True. of the point I really wanted to throw in about the Dian Gui dark tea. Dian means Yunnan.、Mm. Uh, so、oh, yeah. if you say Dian Hong, that's Yunnan black tea. Dian Lu, Yunnan、uh, green tea. So in all the Chinese provinces and、uh, big like areas, we have one word that、uh, represents this. Two words, province name.、Oh. So Dian is Yunnan. So those are historically chosen names, and、uh, that's how we put on drive、uh, on license、yeah, on the car. You look at that.、Oh. There's one word in front and a bunch of other digits, but the first one tells you which <laughs> province they are from. That's so interesting. Like、uh, sometimes they are this one of the character from the name of the province. Sometimes it's totally different, like a Gui. Is Guangxi Province. That's、oh. why here it says Guangxi Liu Bao Cha, Liu Bao Tea. Oh,、mm. so interesting. And Chuan, Sichuan. Chuan, Chuan is Sichuan. So that's、right. one character out of that word. Right, right. Right, Shanghai, but Shanghai, what's the? It's a Hu. So it's not a. Not in, related. Sort、yeah. of like Yunnan. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very cool.、Okay. All right. So we'll get back to back to the book. Oh right, so、um, you wanted to finish there. Now we can dive into the、mm -hmm. ide identification of Puar. Make sure they can see it. The identification of Puar. First, look at its appearance. Whether tea cakes, tuo, brick, or other forms of tea, look at the tea bar. Whether it is completed or not, old or tender. Old leaves are larger. Tender leaves are thinner. If a tea cake cannot be seen its shape from its appearance, but looks broken and small. This kind of tea is produced by the secondary tea. All right, so I have some questions here.、Mm -hmm. Look at—I think tea bar. They basically mean look at the whatever pressing it is. Look at the pressing, right? Yes. But it wasn't. I was like, yes, it's a bit weird. Yes.、Um, and then there is so look at its appearance. Whether so, no matter what shape it is, cake. Tuo is kind of like a、uh, like a pock, a big, pretty big pock.、Mm -hmm. Can be little. Um, or、um, brick, which is、uh, juan. Sorry, guys, jiggling all around. Completed or not? To me, this sounded like if the brick is broken or something, but old or tender. I mean, brick.、I'm, so the I, I know little, I know、right? what you're saying is yeah, because the the, the the grammar how it refers become it. Which to、mm. you it means the whole、uh, press the tea because that was the last sort of reference, right? But、uh, it actually just means uh, uh, look at the shape of the dry leaf on the cake, the surface、right. of the cake, right? Right. So on the、are、cake they, you can see leaves, kind of. Yes. Are they、mm. like quite uh, uh, intact? Right.、Uh, are they? And、uh, again, here you talk about all、oh, the big ones are older leaves, and the tender ones are slimmer leaves.、Mm -hmm. uh, those are really general, right? Like a reference, yeah, for sort people of like, like a basic you, reference, yes, right? Yes, like Igor was talking, like、uh, that's why I was really, really、um, cannot、It's, agree more with what he said.、Mm. Same with observing the tea, because people, because the poor, a lot of them are big leaf cultivars, right? And、uh, it just feel like、uh, 
they're big. Right. Sometimes it's just、uh, who they are, not.、Uh, They're not actually that big to, yes. in in their own category. That's right. We have to like、uh, see enough to know.、Yeah. Okay, what's、uh, the big that refers to a mature like older leaves or what's tender leaf look like? Right. But if、uh, even the surface is breaking into little pieces, you cannot even see a full leaves or stuff. It kind of、uh, implies、Hint. that.、Uh, <laughs> it's a hint. Yes, it's a、And、hint. It's maybe not that secondary. I think just means maybe not great. Yes, it means uh, it's uh, yes lower grade. Lower grade, right?、Mm. Cool. Okay, so cool. That's that kind of covered that.、Mm-hmm. And I don't think I have any other questions in particular.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, you covered the ending. So the ending went right off the rails for me. I couldn't get a thing from that. But basically, what you're saying there is, if there's a bunch of broken leaf, you can't even see a whole leaf. Yeah.、Um, then it's it's a lower grade tea.、Mm-hmm. And in terms of starting to observe leaf, back、yes. to Igor's comment is you got to just do it, observe, and gain experience. It's really、yes. tricky from a one. We there's no silver bullet that can be given here for for that. Like here's、yes. how you know for sure X Y Z by one look, even though you've never seen a cake in your life. No. Yeah, and also there's difference between shenpua and shupua. You cannot cross reference.、Right. Oh, shenpua, this is a whole leaf. Oh, shupua is not a whole leaf. So shupua is not、right. a good tea. Shenpua is better. It's、uh, yeah, you know, it's、right. compare chicken with duck. <laughs> right, exactly. Good one. Now I'm、What? hungry. <laughs> All right. So second, so I'm going to pick up at the next paragraph here, guys, right here. Second, look at its color. Dark or light, and how about the gloss? The authentic ones is in pig liver color. <laughs> the tea which has been stored for five years has such kind of dark red. Okay, so that was、um, gloss. I think is a bit of a strange term. I'm kind of getting used to it. I think they mean the luster.、Mm. Um, we're still looking at the color of the brick, the dry brick, as far、mm-hmm. as I could tell, and you want to look at. Um, are the leaves dark or light? Are they brown, dark brown? Are they light brown? What color are the leaves?、Mm-hmm. And what about the gloss?、Mm-hmm. Um, authentic one is pig liver color. So this is obviously some kind of red brown, but it doesn't tell us what's authentic about it. I'm guessing it's an authentic aged one. That's right. That's、okay. a that's a.、Um, hmm. Because the Chinese and English, the,、uh, the the sentence structure is really different, and how we put things、mm-hmm. are together are different. It's even though one sentence in the Chinese one, which we will understand, is talk about H T in English. It's I ideally break them into two sentences. I think. Yes. 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 So this last、uh, those parts are talking about H T. That's really opening up now. Yes, I was going to. That's really.、Nice. Uh, that's why I lifted that up. Let me get up, the big you, screen here. If you notice the color difference,、mm, like in terms of it's deepening, but it's not like I'm brewing strong, strong. <laughs> I'm brewing strong.、Mm. Uh, it's just it's slowly open up. The、yeah. real aged things are like that,、yeah. especially how dense it is. The 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 change. A lot of them are inside. It needs several.、Mm. Like I brew like four or five. I didn't count, but many infusions. Let me show them the、uh, the chunk when we started again. I、right. can just quickly, and we'll come right back. We、right. can still talk, but that was that's how dense it is. That is like、right. a little a little stone almost. It's so dense. I don't know if you can appreciate <sighs> how tight that is. That's really nice. Really, and now it's open. Almost feel the whole,、uh, whole. Yeah, yeah. Here, here, whole guy wise. Yeah, beautiful. Too much, but、uh, but it's not strong. Like、uh, like I said,、yeah. the aged tea, like、uh, a good quality tea, they're not picky on brewing stuff. It's not a, a five,、mm. ten seconds more. It's not drinkable. Especially this, the old age. This is going on nine、one. years old, right? Yeah, eight, this eight, is eight, eight years old. Eight years old, going on nine. Awesome.、Mm. Oh. Make me really hungry. I want to pee. <laughs> All right. So、uh, back to the book, folks.、Um, right. So anything else though? I think that's it, right? Oh, I wanted to point out that pig liver. I kind of chuckled when I read、oh, that.、Okay. This is really、um, like a, this might not be a good color reference for.、Um, Um, I'm not sure. You can let me know for the folks in Europe, but we unfortunately we don't eat. Well, maybe fortunately, unfortunately, whatever you like. But 
we don't eat that much organ meat here, but it made me chuckle because the um, I've noticed a lot of references in the book are related to food. And there's almost nothing could be more Chinese than to describe everything with a food reference. So even the color red is described with a piece of food, uh, the pig liver. So I had a little chuckle at that. But um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you love pig liver. <laughs> Third, look at the soup. Uh, the clearer the better pu the clearer the better puar is. There is oil droplet film above the soup. On the contrary, the worse the darker. Okay, so this again is. Um, I think if you're if you're brand new to tea and this is your first read through mm. and you're not experienced and you don't know much about puar, you might really miss the point here. Mm -hmm. But I think what mm -hmm. they say is when you look at the soup, kind of what, like what we just held you up, you want to. With dark tea, you want to clear like what you saw with that gold soup. It wasn't full of cloudiness and, and particles, um, mm -hmm. right? And I'm going to skip the middle and jump to the back. On the, If it is, it's not that great. The worse, the darker. I don't think they mean darker. Like you, if it's a deeper red or a deeper color, that's not worse. It's I think they mean cloudy by darker. Is that, is that right? I think it's the first uh, you are really like good at guessing those English. Mm. I, I guess because living with me, you have to guess a lot of crappy <laughs> English sentences, but you're right. pretty good. And also, and, I've, um, it's, I'm not really new. I'm just trying to think as somebody who is new and would they get that? Would they right. understand what's being right. said? And I think this one would have been hard. Uh, I think uh, some of you might have encountered that. I'm not sure, but I did see some of the Puar, Shu Puar, or Asia Puar, or something you brew up, and it's it might not be like in terms of intensity, like a strong, really strong, but the the liquor color looks like soy sauce. It's dark. Right. It's, it's a, so maybe it's a, cloudy isn't even the yeah, right word. Yeah, it's not right, not really cloudy because it's a tea. There's a substance in it, mm. right? So there's two ends we don't want in terms of tea overly clear. It's right. almost like there's nothing, and you taste the most feel this is empty. It might mm. have some flavor. Flavor is not very hard to have, mm. but the most feel is guaranteed empty when That's, it's overly. Yeah, important shiny note and that stuff. flavor isn't the. Um, it's not the key thing, right? We're looking for mm. that mouth feel. That yes. So I ahead. think it's important. Otherwise, we could just drink a flavored tea. What's the better yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. Right, it's the most feel again. Real chicken broth vis-a-vis -vis chicken powder and water. Mm -hmm. Why do we have to make the real one? There right. is a difference. Right. And another one is really like a overly like a not even cloudy because how dark how the Opaque color looks. Yeah, it's right. it doesn't have any luster in it. It doesn't mm. have any clearness. So like a, almost all the light doesn't even right like brilliance. There's a brilliance to a nice tea liquor. They yes. get this like I mentioned no. with the Bayan, yes. almost seem to be radiating. It was so yes. bright. And that kind of a dullness or something in it is not quite affected by the brewing intensity. It's not like mm, you overbrew. You if the fresh tea pot you brew really concentrated, it can be really dark. But if you compare that with a proper made pour side by side, the same intensity, you can see the luster difference. Right, right. Mm. Yeah, so that's a soil good point. sauce look like a shu pour or shen pour and just not. A good point. Not a good thing at all. Yeah. No. And um, do you want to pop out to comments right in the middle or sure. save them for sure. the end? I think let's pop out. I'm getting dizzy. Oh boy. You're getting dizzy. <laughs> this. Oh, we didn't have the book up. Ah? Uh -huh. Oh, sorry guys. I forgot to put the book up. <laughs> we'll, we'll come you're, back. You're getting dizzy too. I'm getting We're dizzy all too. We're getting dizzy. It, it I'm seems. sorry. So um, where were we then? Oh yeah, Jan had a secondary tea. Yeah, no. So we clarified that I think for Jan. So he was wondering what secondary mm. tea meant back in this paragraph here. Let me bring it on. Oh, let me you bring it bring on that screen. Bring the screen first. Yeah. So he was wondering about this. So I think we explained that this actually meant a lower grade, right, a right. lower grade tea. And here's all the coloring I did on the last paragraph. I think it was just one paragraph or so I had right. it off. And then uh, third planet says, as this varies from person to person, what is in general a good marker for grams of leaf of shu puar per hundred mil? Mm, a hundred mil, five gram-ish, yeah, five gram-ish. That's what I would say, about yeah. five. Good questions, good questions. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so now the book's back and we can dive back in. Sorry. <laughs> Igor, I use about five grams per hundred. Nails it again. Yeah. Out of the park. Awesome. So four, smell. So I'm going to pick up right here, guys. Four, smell. Identify whether the smell be out or not. Thus to see if there is a peculiar flavor which is kind of sweet for the aged tea. If you can try to brew, you can see whether the, co the coming out leaf is incomplete or maintain its tender soft. Mm -hmm. My note for this one is, huh? <laughs> I really don't like... Uh, identify whether the smell be out or not. I don't know if this means good or bad, mm. or if it has no, an aroma it means or doesn't. It does have... it have aroma oh, or okay. not? Okay. Okay. So first, does it have an aroma? And does it have returns with hui gan? It's oh. very important. Okay, a peculiar yes. flavor which is kind of sweet for the aged tea. I want to just add one more thing. Is that you feel like in this book is talking about? Sorry, excuse me. This, this tea is really like hmm, powerful, good material, really good mm. material. Anyways, uh, it feels like this book talk about the poor. A lot are emphasizing on aged poor talks, not just straight up just poor in general. It's this tea, uh, this book came out in uh, two thousand eight or something like in the two thousand when the aged tea thing was really. Um, heated a topic in right. in China yes so a lot of here is trying to help people choosing aged poor just want to clear that up oh and okay yes so here this section is also talk about aged poor right so does that the full uh, section is poor ID right and yes. it got a pretty big chunk of it's a, a of, lot of, of them text. talk about aged poor right right and uh, it means the aroma is the aroma like uh, can you smell that aged aroma? That's a special aged aroma. And uh, and later on, it's a, it kind of give it a minor definition of it has a very a tinge of sweet but very brisk smell. Oh, here in the in the first in this area here, right? Yeah. This, this peculiar aged sweet brisk. Yeah, but it didn't uh, capture that uh, yeah. little brisk, uh, refreshing. Right. Uh, and um, if you can uh, brew it, uh, you can. Uh, you want to see the brewed leaves, if they're uh, you know intact, are they soft and right tender? Uh, I just want to hear say because in the book it says a unique age of flavor, and that's what I don't want to translate too much, and I think that's what we should tell people it's a, a unique aged right. flavor that you need to have enough experience of right. a real HT to have. It's really hard to describe because mm. I, have, I met so many people there and they take moldiness as aged flavor. And right. moldiness is moldiness. It's I was, not yeah. aged flavor. I was going to say different. it's really hard, uh, I think, for a lot of people to get that baseline because, again, mm -hmm. why are we here, right? To bring people authentic tasting great Chinese tea and authentic aged tea. And it's it's really easy to get an aged tea. The funny thing- And then your baseline is off. Yes, the right? funny thing is uh, the more you drink uh, the tea, like we think it was real, but they are all fake. And you are so used to this, then we don't know what a real mm. one should taste like. And yeah. sometimes when we taste a real one, it's like, oh, it's not what I used to taste like. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that happens a lot. All right, so... And, and okay, just to talk about... Is no, that no. okay? Yeah, no. Okay. Just talk about... Because I just mentioned that this book is about like a, uh, 2000 something. And um, the interesting thing is that now, now at least I look at the North America's uh, poor market. You look at it, it really resonates uh, like a, a looks just like a 10, 15 years ago is the China's uh, age poor market, which is uh, filled with a fake poor. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not uh, trying hard to fake, are really easy, like uh, this low end, low end fake that you can just know by look at the title is wrong, the pictures are wrong, right, right. everything is wrong. It's very it, it kind of like a bullying 
the situation that people don't have much knowledge of right. or taste taking uh, advantage taste. of the situation. Yes, because our knowledge. taste about age the poor is empty, right? right? They are trying to fill in with that. So kind of take advantage of people don't know too much about right. HT. Then it's getting better. Like now, if you go uh, look at the Chinese age the poor market. Uh, it's way less of those um, easy low grade, fix, easy things. Because after right. times and times, as start when people start to have get into that and try more teas and start, eventually they will encounter real ones and see the difference. And the fake ones become really hard to exist. Right. So now you can look at the Chinese uh, poor market as the uh, as the fakes are really trying hard. They mm -hmm. are doing much better job. At least it's more right. drinkable to you know, to call it rather mm. than those elementary ones. And those elementary ones just go overseas. Right. Maybe 10. That's what I was going to say. The, <laughs> the quote unquote good news is, is those, those easy to detect fakes are uh, flooding the overseas market. Well, well, give it some time and people will eventually mm -hmm. come around and realize the That's right. thing. Yeah. yeah, just needs time. Anyway, last paragraph. Last paragraph, right on. So the basic qualities for judging right here, guys, the basic qualities for judging Pu'ar is that normal quality without bad changing, no odor. Pu'ar must be clean and without non-tea substances. Pu'ar cannot be colored and without additive. The appearance of Pu'ar should be smooth, even and equal thickness, etc. All right. So again, this was a bit chunky. The basic qualities for is that without bad changing. So I don't know the first means sentence. it didn't go bad. Oh, it's not moldy or rotten. Yeah, it's and there's not moldy. no moldy odor that would go right. with that, which again, we encounter quite a bit. Right. When we're here when talking about quote unquote aged tea that are actually maybe not so old, but a little bit gross, i.e. moldy. Yeah. Pu'ar must be clean and without non tea So that means basically, I think you don't mm -hmm. want other stuff in your Pu'ar, like there shouldn't be other things in there. It's just Undesired, tea. unless it's like a scented or one that those right. are okay. Right. But, you know. Um, yeah, I don't know, just other material that's not tea. Mm -hmm. I don't know, additives yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And I think they mentioned coloring too. Right. Cannot be colored. Are they referring to coloring? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are tons also, of Also, that's ways. a trick. People will put like red. How do you a make a fake uh, HT? Right, Step shim. one, coloring right, and the right. food, uh, uh, the flavoring. People think a certain flavor is aging, so that make right people do put that make me want to come back to no, without non tea substances. We've even seen. I want to. I want to say this. We've mm. even seen actually aged shampuar that had tea substances added to it, aka shupuar, which was, I guess, a coloring guy, right? Uh, it depends. Well, I don't want to take that the wrong way. First, right. uh, there are people who using that. Uh, uh, mix the sheng and shu to fake the age and second right. mix sheng and shu was in production at a certain phases they right. are different what i care about it's about the transparency right it's about transparency right. are you titling the tea properly right. are you selling that uh, right. uh, with a proper title with a proper gotcha. yeah. price tag right right that's what i care like got you yeah. there's nothing wrong with the sheng and shu together there right. was a in and of official. itself it used because to be that done. improves the taste right right the shen pu'er we are tasting today the fresh new shen pu'er from 2020 doesn't taste anything like a fresh new shen pu'er at the uh, 1970s mm -hmm. right so the shen pu'er processing is also improving too to make or, that more drinkable because right. people start to drink that anyway there's a lot of uh, changes and uh, different phases in pu'er cool okay that's um and then i'm still working my way through this paragraph cannot be colored and without additive okay we don't want stuff in it and the appearance this was a little bit tricky too the appearance of pu'er should be smooth mm-hmm even mm -hmm. and equal thickness. I think we're talking about the cake again here. Uh, yes, this is okay. talking about the pressed cake okay, so because you would get that, assuming like from more uh, authentic, uh, <laughs> authentic uh, source. Equal thickness does, doesn't necessarily mean the cake thickness though, right? There's always the little cake. wall in the middle. Yes. There <sighs> is another thing. Is uh, Again, this one, if you don't know the uh, historic not quite historic the background of that time and how much it wrong awful fakes out there 
and uh, uh, that's why this book is so useful for nowadays North American tea people because not just North American but because we're in here we observe that better mm. Europe or anything I don't know much so you tell me if this book is useful for you but right. uh, this is the situation you will see here in North America when people sell fake teas that they look so rugged, they look so aged, right. r really rough packaging, right, right. rough cake, and they're right. like from 60s, 70s. Reminds me of self, like sometimes you condition a book, you burn the edges a little bit, you cut right. it, you make but that. Who right. do those teas? All times, all those teas are done by. Remember, at that time, China is more communi uh, more <laughs> communist. Uh, State, government, state control, state control mm. right? So what it means is everything has a standard. They are not going to produce mm. a cake that is so like lopsided, thick right. and stuff. Uh, it, it's not like that. There are standards right. when they are product. So they are at least the look is matching the minimum look, yeah. right? A mm. professional look, right. despite the taste. But you could sometimes see those pigs. Oh, those are from the 60s. That's why they look so rough, look so bad. So and out of shape and yeah, stuff. We're yeah, we're so uh, not authentic because some old farmer did it. No, no, fake. Right on. <laughs> and I think that covers it then. Yeah, uh, Changing the water. Oh, wait, I have some notes up here. Pyramid smooth, liquor or leaves. We clarified that, yeah. And I've got a bunch of notes for stuff to put up on the page for you guys after. The most recent, I didn't get a chance to say it out loud to you guys, was she was mentioning about Puar and um, anyway, great article in Charan magazine that covers some of the stuff you were just talking about in terms of the, um, the Puar through the ages and what to look for. So mm. I'll put a link to Cha Ren down below. It's a really great article that covers uh, in a bit more depth than we're able to right, in this right. setting to give you some yeah, hints, give you some simple like some context. Uh, yes, and some simple reference. For example, mm -hmm. ancient tree, old tree, shu, yes. shu pu are uh, uh, from uh, Ban Zhang or Bing Dao in 2000. Mm -hmm. Like uh, using those time mark, the general idea is you know that in the early 1900s, there is no iPhone cell phone. Like it just doesn't yeah. exist. So the same kind of thing for tea, yeah. uh, they often match current trend with old times, which didn't which, exist. Yeah, so it's easy, to, easy for titles. you and I to figure out, oh, if they're talking about some hot tea region from the 1940s, which that wasn't even a thing. Nobody care about that region in the 40s. So there's there's that, there's right. much more. I'm gonna put the link down, so be sure right. if you're into Puar, that's a great article to just go over. It's mm -hmm. only a two page spread with some bullets, really nice. Okay, let's check this stuff. Yeah. I don't mean to rush, but I really- No, no, you need to- <laughs> I'm <laughs> she's so explode. We gotta, she's like, God, God, I gotta go. Okay. So Jan says, uh, yeah, yes, we were talking about the five grand. Five grand to a hundred is a good amount, but with a high chai, it can be more like a gram for a hundred mill and with a long steep time yes I agree mm -hmm. yes cool I think it's uh, always a good thing to experiment like start with a five or eight and then tone down tone up yeah right. and uh, Igor and uh, says in China is it common to consume, uh, consume a young shampoo today or they just uh, drink it to test the quality for aging I think it's uh, both ways mm. it really depends uh, there are definitely people drinking young. Some people just love that taste, mm. right? Um, yeah, really um, bright. I almost yeah. want to say harsh because some of them can be. Yes. You know, but, but they're making that much more delicious. Much smoother, now. right? Yeah. Uh, just taste the qualify for uh, quality for aging. Yes, if uh, you're considering buying a big quantity of a certain tea, you definitely want to test a drive and if mm -hmm. sometimes some tea is just not delicious at the moment, so what can you do? Just at least try to improve it with aging. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've heard Who's that? Dora I've, Dora Iman. Dora Iman, right. I've never had the tea that has yellow spores in ah, it. Is yeah. it good? Mm. Yes, it is great. So Dora I hope I can call you Dora. Dora Iman is right. asking that's so that's Fujuan. Yes. And that's the tea we had are that coming up. Having. We're having that oh, in right, a couple yeah. of weeks. Right, right. Um and yes, it's really good Two and weeks. it does give it a bit of a unique flavor. So those yellow spores are called uh Jinghua 
Okay. Or gold flower. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's the name? Uradium cristatum, I think, is the yeah. is the um, biological name for those. Mm -hmm. Super healthy, been really studied in China and Japan. And yeah, it's very yes. good. You can check out our website. Yep. Just because you asked, I'm going to put the link there for you mm -hmm. as well. But you oh. can find that easily on our website. Right. I just want to point out that there was somebody uh, in one of the live asked about the cha bao, uh, the little cha bao, cha bao, like the tea buds and stuff. Usually people buy that from Yunnan. Those are not tea. Those are not Camellia sinensis sinensis or right. Asamica. Those are not uh, like the drinking tea we're talking about there. It's just right. a local herbal thing because right, tea, right. Camellia has a big family. But mm. that doesn't belong to that. And uh, there are people selling that as, oh, that's an ancient tree. The tree can be old, but uh, uh, that's not the same as poor tea tree. They're different. Right. Mm. Good one. I forgot about that. That was like last week's lot, the Sunday like tea that. book or earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that is, uh, oh, mm -hmm. Jan says, but somewhere I heard that it is must be only on the inside of the tea brick tea cake, not on the surface. And That's that right. is 100% true. Hopefully you heard it from us, but we've said that when, I feel like we just talked about this recently. Could be, could be. Yeah, yeah, but that is right. So you don't want to see those yellow spores on the outside mm -hmm. and you never want to see- And they have a unique taste and they're not a moldy. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes people saw that uh, the moldy tea as it's a yellow flower or a golden mm. flower. So uh, you can, uh, our website has a good uh, picture, especially yep. on Fujuan tea. It's yep. a good uh, reference for you to yep. look we at. We had to break it to show it. Yeah, and it you even commented, if uh, you break uh, Fujuan and for a while, the surface of the golden flower disappear. Yeah, and, yeah, actually yeah, they do. They go away. Um, I, um, so it's, it's only the inside. Mm -hmm. And in general, for your dark tea, you don't want anything on the surface of that except tea. Right, you don't want to see white fuzz or white dots or mm -hmm. weird, no, no funky stuff on the surface. So no mold on our tea. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Next week we will be diving to Shenpur and Shupur a little bit more. So um, be yes. sure to join us. And um, and also, if you don't get our newsletter and didn't see, we've got a great schedule in November coming your way. So um, you'll be able holiday live. Yeah, holiday live schedule or some, anyway, schedule. something joyous and fun for 2020 for a change, right? Right. So I'll put some, um, uh, I'll put, I'll put that in the links down below as well. I'm just taking notes here. Um, so, uh, and if you don't get our newsletter, well, hop on over to our website and <laughs> throw us your email so you can stay up to date. We throw out when we do videos, we throw out cool stuff that's upcoming, new teas, mm -hmm. all kinds of great stuff. Next week, like you said, we're diving into Shen and Shu and guys, have a great day. Keep, Keep sleeping. sleeping. I wasn't ready. Here we go.